let us pray father we thank and bless your name because of who you are great and mighty god powerful god omniscient omnipotent omnipresent god we give you all the praise we give you all the honor and all the adoration this morning lord we want to look into your word speak to our hearts lord help us to be doers of this word in jesus mighty name i pray Amen. In our daily manner extracts this day, the 26th of October, we're considering the topic blessed through obedience. Blessed through obedience. Our text is taken from Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 19. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and subdued his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here, here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamp for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamp for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. I will stop here because of time. A key verse is in verse 17 and verse 18. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. In our passage, God tested Abraham to know if he would give him the most precious thing in his life, his only son Isaac. The next morning, he was on his way to Mount Moriah to offer the child in sacrifice as demanded by God. He was at the point of actually slaying the lad when he stopped him and provided a ram as a substitute. God then called him again and reaffirmed his earlier promises to make his descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand at the seashore. God called Abraham at 75 years of age, but did not immediately give him a child, even though he knew barrenness was a problem in the family. This is because God was primarily interested in redeeming the soul and teaching him how to walk before him and be perfect. Genesis 17 verse 1. Today, God still wants men to know that godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. The eternal destiny of man is of great concern to God. While he blesses people with temporal things such as money, cars, houses, job, etc., his greatest desire is that men should know that his plan and purpose for them go beyond the present material world. is preparing for them a glorious land where he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. 
eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Revelation 21 verse 4. This is the ultimate. Abraham is already there. Matthew chapter 8 verse 11. And many shall join him there. If you are not qualified to be there yet, why not make yourself one through repentance and faith in Christ? Thought for the day. God blesses and honors the generation of those who obey him. Amen. God tested Abraham. There is a vast difference between God's purpose in testing a person and Satan's purpose in testing a person. God tests to confirm and strengthen. On the other hand, Satan tests to corrupt and weaken. Remember Job in Job chapter 1? Satan's purpose of testing Job, of trying Job, is to kill Job is to destroy you. He told God, let me try him. Let me test him. If he will not cause you to your face. He thought Job will relinquish his service to God. He thought Job will drop his Bible. Up till today, Satan try people. Satan tempts people to, in order to make them drop their conviction. In order to make them give up their faith in God. As we look at our text this morning, the repetition of the word son and only son in verse 2 he said thy son thy only son shows us how important this test is shows us how much God really wants from Abraham. He wants to get that which is precious to Abraham. He wants to get that which is so valuable by Abraham. He wants to get that which is so desirable by Abraham. God still test us today he want to test to know our conviction he want to know our commitment to him he want to know how much we love him abraham obeys god's commands immediately and unquestioningly he never said, well, God, remember what you told me. I'm going to be a father of many nations. And this is the only avenue. I, I just have one Isaac. It is through him that I will become the father of many nations. And now you demand Isaac from me, God. How will that promise come to pass? He never says so. He believed the Lord. He believed the word of God. In fact, when you read what is said there in verse 9, number five and abraham said unto his young men abide ye here with the ass and i and the lad we go yonder and worship and come again to you can you see the faith of abraham he so much believed the lord he said we will go and come again to you we will go and we will come back again he believed that even if he slay his son God is the resurrection and the life. He's going to raise up Isaac. Whatever you give to God is not a waste. Whatever you slay and sacrifice to God is not a waste. The time you give to God, the talent you give to God, the treasure you give to God, people look at you and say, ah, ah, are you the one that killed Jesus? See how you spend your life serving the Lord. See how you spend your money serving the Lord. My brother, I come to tell you this morning, your service to God is not in vain. It may not look at it now, the way you are serving God, you may not see the dividend now, but the long run, my God will provide. My God will bring it to pass in your life. Your service to God is not in Vein. You will see the dividend. You will see the result of your service to God. Abraham's obedience 
is based on faith. He believes God will provide the sacrifice. The word worship, as we saw there in verse 4, means to bow oneself close to the ground in total submission to God. He never argued. He wasn't angry. He said, we will go yonder and worship the lord and come again unto you abraham believed the lord abraham had faith in the lord abraham had trust in the look at verse 11 and verse 12 and the angel of the lord called unto him out of heaven and said abraham abraham and he said here am i and he said lay not thy hand upon thy lad neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. Now I know that thou fearest God. Does it mean God never knew he fears him before? Of course, God is omniscient. The angel of the Lord is saying to Abraham, by your faithful actions, I experientially know that to fear God. I experientially know that to fear God. Abraham's obedience is rewarded in three ways. Number one, God provides the very thing he demands from Abraham. He provides the sacrifice. He provides that which he demands from Abraham. God we certainly provide. Number two, God provides assurances of his promises to Abraham. He provides assurances of his promises, a reaffirmation of his promises to Abraham. Finally, God provides for future needs of Abraham. If you trust the Lord today, you trust him, you have faith and confidence in the Lord. He's going to provide for you. Things may not be working out for you now. You are giving yourself to the work of God. You are laboring for God. You pray and fast. You labor for souls. And it seems as if there is no dividend now. But remember, God never fails. God never falter. What he said he will do in days gone by, that promise he gave to you many years ago, he showed to you that is going to bless you, God will not fail. It's going to bless you. Continue to serve the Lord. Continue to labor for God. He will bring it to pass in your life. You know, today, many people, the church Christians sing the song, Abraham's blessings am I. Abraham's blessings am I. I am blessing the morning. I am blessing the evening. Abraham's blessings am I. And yet, they don't want to carry out Abraham's sacrifice. Listen, Abraham's blessing cannot be yours if Abraham's sacrifice had not been done by you. If you don't sacrifice your time to God, if you don't sacrifice your all to God, if you are still holding your Isaac, you are still holding that thing that is so precious to you. God is saying, my son, give me your life. My son, give me your heart. My son, give me your time. And you are saying, this time is too precious to me. I cannot give to God. Then you cannot get the blessings of Abraham. God wants to see how obedient you want to be. God wants to see how willing you are ready to sacrifice your all to Him. If you are not qualified to be, I mean, to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, why not get qualified today? Abraham today has gotten the ultimate blessing. He saw the Lord. He went to heaven. That was what God wants to reaffirm. God wants to confirm if he's still dedicated to Him. God wants to confirm if he's still a candidate of heaven today abraham is in heaven what are you ready to give up to get there what are you ready to give up to see the lord face to face brothers and sisters make up your mind this morning be ready to give up sin in order 
to get to heaven. Be ready to sacrifice anything for the Lord in order to see him face to face. There is nothing in this life. If it is in this life, you have hope, you have all men most miserable. There is nothing in this life. What are we enjoying here on earth? There is nothing here on earth. Our ultimate goal is to see the Lord face to face. Do all you can to get there. Sacrifice all you can to get there. Be willing to give up anything to obey the Lord. To, I mean, to believe in the Lord as you make up your mind this morning and say Lord I surrender to you I give up my Isaac I give up my time I give up my talent to obey your word the blessings of the Lord will be mighty in your life this morning you make up your mind and say Lord I surrender to you open your mouth and begin to pray to the lord talk to the lord this morning say lord i surrender what is that thing you are still holding back from god what is that thing you are still holding back from is touched open your mouth and say lord here am i i surrender all to you the lord is saying give me your hearts give me your time give me your talent have you giving god your heart have you given God your time? Have you given God your talent? Open your mouth and say, Lord, I surrender all to thee. All to thee, I surrender all. All to thee, O God. Open your mouth and pray, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. God blesses and honors the generation of those who obey him as he sent you, as he called you. Obey the Lord. You will see his blessings. You will experience his touch. You will experience his grace multiplying in your life. Talk to the Lord in prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We've seen the obedience of Abraham. And Lord, we are willing to obey. Give us the grace to obey you, Lord. Anything that we are holding back from you, holding our time from you, holding our treasure from you, Lord, this morning, we surrender all. Take it, Lord, and use it for your glory. We know whatever we give to you is not a waste. You will bless us mightily in return. Give Give us the grace to serve you. Give us the grace to obey your word. Help us, Lord, to surrender our all to you, our life to you, our all and in all to you. As we give to you, Lord, we will not take it back again. We will depend upon you, trusting you to the point that, Lord, we will be ready to die for the sake of the gospel. We thank you because we believe you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you.